I've had enough of this. Please say something too. I was already at my limit and couldn't hold it any longer. What are you saying all of a sudden? This isn't all of a sudden. I've been asking you about this for many times now. You need to say something to your brother. I confronted my husband Bob for him to ask my brother-in-law Stephen to leave our house. You want me to kick my brother out of the house with nowhere to go? How can you say that when you're my wife and his sister-in-law? That's right. You really are the worst kind of person. Not only my husband, but even my mother-in-law Lily came at me as if it was my fault. This is a story of my experience of being involved with an unbelievable family. My name is Emily. I married my current husband Bob when I was 28 years old. We met through an arranged marriage. When I was a student, I was so absorbed in the tennis club, which I had played since childhood, and I wasn't into any romantic relationships. I spent every day in club activities, and I was trying to also keep up with my studies that I was too busy to be in a relationship. Of course, it's not that I had no desire to get married or anything like that. However, having never been in a relationship before, I didn't know how to build a relationship with a man, and even after starting to work, I was still unable to find a boyfriend. My boss at work. Who couldn't stand to see me like that, told me that he knew a good man and introduced me to Bob. My first impression of him was that he was a kind man. He works for the government and seemed very calm and peaceful. Since he liked me and I originally wanted to get married by the time I was thirty, I immediately accepted his offer to become a couple. Afterwards, we got along very well. And we soon fell seriously in love with each other. I especially liked his sincerity and kindness, and I thought I could actually marry him, or so I thought. After a while, he proposed to me, and I immediately accepted and got engaged. We were able to get married without any problems. When Bob and I decided to get married. My parents, who were wealthy and owned several houses as vacation homes, gave me one of their houses. They gave me the option to choose the house I would want, and I chose a house that was just right, not too big and not too small. I chose a house which was just a little bigger than a normal house. The house had enough room for our child in the future, and also a garden. It was convenient for transportation, as it was close to the bus station, and there were no inconvenience as markets were close by, which is why I also chose it. I still remember Bob, who usually doesn't show his emotions much, say, in an apologetic tone, "Wow, is it okay that we get to have such a great house?" I had no doubt that our happy life was about to begin. After that, the wedding was over, and everything was going well for us. However, a few months later, my father-in-law, who had been suffering from a chronic illness, passed away. My husband had one younger brother, Stephen, but he lived and worked at a factory in another state, so we never saw him on a regular basis. And the first time I saw him myself was at our wedding. The second time I saw Stephen was at my father-in-law's funeral. After my father-in-law passed away and Lily was left alone at home, Bob began to contact my mother-in-law Lily frequently. At the same time, Lily began to frequently come over to our house. It is true that Bob was the eldest, and perhaps he felt a certain amount of responsibility as the eldest son. It wasn't hard to understand why he was worried about Lily, who was left alone. But I was busy with work at the time, and home was the only place where I could relax. So I was a little concerned that Lily was sitting there when I came home. 
And this had kept on continuing for a few months, and one day, my husband suggests me his idea. Hey, Emily. I'm thinking about having mom live with us at our home. What? I was very confused at my husband's sudden idea. What are you saying all of a sudden? Even now, Lily comes over almost every day. I say that to him, and he says, It must be hard for her to come all the way here every time though, isn't it? So, I think it would be better if we all lived together. Bob says, with his bright sparkled eyes. It seems as if he had just come up with the best idea of his lifetime. Uh, wait a minute. I don't like it when you say things like that all of a sudden. We have our own lives and lifestyle here. I try to back up my point, but he says, I mean, this house is too big for just the two of us, isn't it? We have plenty of rooms, and I think it would help mom a lot if we lived together. He says that, and it seemed like he didn't want to listen to my opinion. I didn't really give him a concrete answer, but Bob kept on going on and on, and if anything happened, he would say, I'm worried about leaving mom alone, to me. I honestly wasn't too keen on the idea, partly because we had just started our new married life, but if Bob tells me that he's worried about Lily, I couldn't really say anything back to him. While I was avoiding to give a definite answer, Lily sold their family home and I was half forced into a situation where I had to accept her into our house. At first, I blamed Bob for preceding everything without me agreeing to him, but when he said, We don't have my parents' house anymore, and my mom has no place to live. So, we have no choice. I kind of lost all interest in talking back to him. After that, life was very difficult for me. I wasn't harassed or got bullied by Lily, but I didn't like being told, You're his wife, right? At every little thing, and I hated it. You are married to my son, so you should serve your husband's family. She seemed to have this old-fashioned way of thinking, and when I gave priority to my work, she repeatedly told me, You are my daughter-in-law, so you should be more aware of that. But since Lily came over to our house, I myself became too lazy to stay at home and spent many days working overtime at the office. I was still living an ordinary life, dodging sarcastic remarks from Lily in my own way every day. Until that incident happened. Sometime later, my brother-in-law Stephen, who had been living and working at the factory in another state, announced that he would quit his job at the end of the year and come back to his parents' house. Bob and Lily and I were surprised at Stephen's sudden announcement, but we had more important things to think about. We had to think more about where he would come back to. Their parents' house had already been sold and he could no longer live there as he wished. When Stephen, who was ready to come back to his parents' house, came back here, he blamed Bob and Lily for selling the house without any notice while he was gone. Hey, I ain't hear nothing about the house being sold. What the hell are you doing? Stephen used to be in a gang and his looks were pretty flashy and also had a very rough tone of voice. I had never been involved with that kind of person before, and to be honest, I was not very good at it and wanted to stay away from him as much as possible. I'm sorry, but I was worried about mom living in that house all by herself. I thought you were going to live and work over there for a long time too. My husband tried to calm him down, but... Huh? What the hell? How dare you decide it all on your own? You better take responsibility for this. He yells at Bob. 
Bob is supposed to be his eldest brother, but he just freaked out once Steven starts yelling at him. In the end, he couldn't say anything back and just looked down with a pale face. My father-in-law had said before he died that if anything happened to him, he would leave all the affairs of the house to Lily. Stephen, who left his parents' house without permission, worked out of the state and didn't send any money, has no right to blame Lily and his family. That's what I thought in my mind, but in the end, we couldn't come to an agreement and Stephen ended up moving in with us on the condition that he would stay with us until he found a new job. I was completely against it and complained. I can't have Stephen living with us too. Now that Lily has come to live with us, our living expenses are getting higher and higher. I complained to Bob, but he told me that he would make him leave as soon as he found a job, so I had to put up with it until then. I couldn't just refuse Stephen and request him to move out all on my own, so I had no choice but to have Stephen move in with us for the time being. At this point, my mentality was already shattered, but the real hard part came after that. First of all, Stephen had not tried to look for a new job even after a month, despite the fact that he was supposed to be looking for a new job. He didn't even look at any job listings, he didn't go to job interviews, and he just spent his days lounging around in the living room. Some days, he would stay in his room and blast loud music, and other days, he would occupy himself with the TV in the living room for hours, and seeing that, I was getting more and more stressed every day. To top it all off, I had just come home from work and he would ask me, Where's the meal? Or, I'll be the first one to take a bath, so prepare the bath quickly. I just couldn't stand this any longer and complained to Bob about it. Hey, it's about Steven. Can't you do something about his attitude? Because he's treating me like his housekeeper. What do you mean, a housekeeper? He thinks of you as his own sister and adores you in his own way, you know? Bob says this as he laughs away. Adores me? No way! He orders me to do things, you know? This is just like being his housekeeper. I'm not a servant in this house, you know? When I got very emotional, he said, You should be fine, Emily. You're my wife after all. My anger reached its peak as he said that, so... I am only your wife and not your brother's wife! And ended up yelling at him. <sighs> Please, don't make a big deal out of this. You're right, Emily. You're not his wife. But it won't change the fact that he's your little brother, right? Please, don't be a hassle and just make it work with him somehow. That's what he says to me. I was disappointed in what Bob had said. He seemed to think that if I was the only one in the house who had to put up with it, everything would be alright. Bob seemed to think so. I thought that there was nothing more I could say to Bob, so I stopped complaining about Stephen and Lily to him after that. Instead, I would occasionally call my parents and complain to them. My father and mother both told me that I could always come home if I needed to, so I was able to put up with it. But then one day, Stephen had caused another incident. When I returned home after work, I saw a fire truck parked in front of our house. When I wondered what was going on, several firefighters came out of the front door and I saw Bob and Lily thanking them. After seeing the fire trucks leave, I questioned Bob. What is the meaning of this? Why were the firefighters at our house? Bob and Lily looked at each other and awkwardly started to tell what happened. Well. 
Stephen was smoking, and the cigarette butts from his cigarette caused a fire. What? I let out a loud voice in surprise and anger. When I asked about the details, they told me that the cigarette butt had caused a minor fire and that Lily quickly contacted Bob and the fire department. I couldn't understand why they didn't contact me. It was a good thing that I returned just when the firefighters were leaving, but if I had come home without seeing what was going on, were they going to keep it a secret? I asked them that, but they both remained silent. Irritated by the two of them, I hurried to Stephen's room and entered it without knocking. Huh? Hey, you better knock. I ignored Stephen, who was so angry with me, and I looked around the room. I immediately noticed the burn marks on the floor right next to where his bed mattress was. Ever since Stephen arrived, the house smelled of cigarettes, and that was very stressful for me. And to top it off, he had left burn marks on my favorite house, and I was at the end of my patience. Even though I was right in front of Lily and Stephen, I couldn't care less. I've had enough of this. Please say something too. I was already at my limit and couldn't hold it any longer. Then Bob says, What are you saying all of a sudden? To me. This isn't all of a sudden. I've been asking you about this for many times now. You need to say something to your brother. I confronted my husband, Bob, for him to ask my brother-in-law, Stephen, to leave our house. Then, Bob sighs deeply and says with a tired tone, You want me to kick my brother out of the house with nowhere to go? How can you say that when you're the wife and his sister-in-law? He began to say this. That's right. You really are the worst kind of person. Not only my husband, but even my mother-in-law, Lily, came at me as if it was my fault. Why am I the one being blamed? Originally, this is my precious house that my father gave to me. Lily and Stephen, who came to live here without my permission, were in no position to complain, let alone my husband. I knew I couldn't back down this time, so I told Stephen clearly, I want you to leave. How could you? Are you saying that you want to kick your brother-in-law out of our house? If you can't stand it, then you better get out of the house. With that, he left the room. Stephen was watching this whole thing with a grin on his face. I was so frustrated and went back to my room. The next day, when I came home from work, the key to the front door wouldn't fit. No matter how many times I tried, the key wouldn't fit into the keyhole and there was no response when I pressed the doorbell. Then, a notification on my phone rang, alerting me that there was a message from Bob. I changed the locks for the house. I'll let you back in after you cool down. That was what his message said. Don't be ridiculous. If you're being like this, then I'll leave. With that in mind, I went back to my parents' house and explained the situation to my mother and father. My parents' faces grew increasingly grim after they heard what I had to say, and my father said, Leave the rest to me, and had hired a lawyer who knew my father well. Things progressed rapidly, and I sent them a demand for alimony and divorce, as well as a certified letter ordering them to leave the house. As soon as we began to discuss, Bob rejects the idea of divorce by saying, Divorce over something as trivial as this is ridiculous. But when I told him that if he didn't agree to a divorce, I would be willing to take him to court, and with that, he simply gave up. Perhaps he was overwhelmed by the word court, and Bob suddenly began to quiet down. 
But when the subject of moving out of the house came up, he started to go against the idea again, raising his voice. This house is our home. As a husband, I have the right to own it too. Bob looks down at me with his nose in the air as if to say, I told you so. Then, the lawyer pulled out the registration certificate and says this, You don't have any rights to this house. Indeed, this house was given to me by my father as a gift quite some time ago. So, in other words, the house is not even a joint property, but it is solely owned by me. I could see the faces of Bob, Lily, and Stephen turning pale as they learned about the truth. Perhaps they thought they would never be kicked out of the house, but their faces gradually turned grim. Uh, um, uh, Emily, why don't you reconsider the divorce for a moment? He always says convenient things whenever it's not the best situation for him. What would you like to do? The lawyer asks me, and I said, Of course, I'll have a divorce as I won't change my mind. The three of them were devastated by the result, and Bob, perhaps thinking that there was nothing more he could do, agreed to the divorce and it was finalized. Bob, Lily, and Stephen moved out of the house. Bob, who works in the government, was so busy paying the alimony that he couldn't continue to live as he had before, and the family of three moved into a rundown apartment. Of course, Lily and Stephen were stressed out because they couldn't live freely, and as for Stephen, he tried to release his stress outside the house, and I heard that he assaulted a thug. Well, anyways, they have nothing to do with me anymore. I got my house back safely and restored the room where Stephen used to live in. The burn marks on the floor that I had been worrying about disappeared nicely, and my mood has brightened. Now, my parents come to stay once a week and on weekends, and we are having a good time in our own way. I went to a dinner with a lawyer who helped me with this case afterwards to thank him for his help, and we have been seeing each other regularly since then. Perhaps, one day, I will be able to live a married life again. With this thought in my mind, I live happily every day.